red would turn to amber and then to green as the signal got better and better. Up in the top left hand corner here we have tractor speed and we can change it to any one of these other items here just by pressing another icon. Since I've got acres applied on this side, I prefer to see ground speed. You can put swath number or you can completely remove it out of the way. You can do the same thing with this side over here. If I wanted the time lapse of the application or if I just want to completely re remove it. So very user friendly. I can customize the screen the way I want to without having to go into setup. This is your vehicle icon here and here's a menu to where you can get into setup. You can change your guidance modes. You can start a boundary. You can plot a return to point. If you ran out of product and wanted to go back to a certain point in the field, it could tell you exactly where that point is. Or I can zoom. I've got a little zoom level here to where I can zoom in and out. And let's go ahead and make that adjustment. I always like to zoom in to where I can see my horizon just a little bit. That's the horizon of the field there. Going back into setup, I can change my guidance modes. There's straight AB. There's last pass guidance mode. You can turn the guidance mode off. You can have an AB curve guidance mode or even a center pivot guidance mode. Let's just choose uh, last pass. Get back out of here. And uh, Let's see what else we've got. We'll go to this home key here. All guidance systems need to know how wide your swath is. So let's go in and take a look at that. We've got a vehicle here and there's a graphic display to where you can enter in the distance between the antenna that's on the vehicle versus the swath in the back. And if it was, if it was uh, 12 feet I could just enter 12 feet. Now it's 12 feet back. And to show you how versatile this unit is, it not only can be used for a spreader, say that has one swath width, you can actually enter in the number of sections of a sprayer. Now today we're going to have five sections in there and I've already got different widths entered in there. And if I wanted to change any one of them, I just change it. Put in my number, hit enter. And so there's my widths. There's my number of boom sections. I've got five in there just to show you what all it can do. It can actually go up to seven. So that's how easy it is to set up your antenna to swath and the number of boom sections that you have. I can circle back out of here. I can change my LED indicators so that each one represents, in this case I've got it set on 12 inches. So every light that comes on, I'm 12 inches off the center line. And you can change that if you like. And then this is my satellite. I can turn on certain satellites and uh, that's normally just preset at the factory and that's something you probably don't even need to adjust. If you want to change the brightness of your console. There's a brightness. There's a color contrast to change your background. And um, you can even change it from metric to US. What I'm going to do for you today though is play you a demonstration that's pre-recorded in the unit. So I can either turn on GPS with an antenna and locate me in the field or I can press this play button for training purposes. So the GPS has started. Let's go to the field, to the work screen, and see what happens. So if we were in the field and we gained GPS, our signal would change from this searching mode to an actual signal. He would start moving in the field, and I can actually engage my swath by touching the screen or with an optional boom status or conveyor status on off switch. Now this guy's going 12 miles per hour. We're covering this many acres of applied area and while we're going around the field I might want to collect a boundary. 
So I'm going to activate the boundary. And this little white line that you see appearing there is logging the boundary. And as soon as I make my pass all the way around the field, it will automatically close and tell me how many acres are bounded in the field. It will also tell me how many acres I've applied. Let's establish a guideline. Let's say I wanted to change to an AB guidance mode. I've got a little A point here. And now it's asking me to plot a B point. There's my guideline. And I'm driving on the line, so this is indicating that I'm on the center line with no adjustments needed. And this line over here to my left and right are the next swath over. He's just driving around the perimeter of the field, and he could at any time just turn into a perpendicular pass there, but what he's doing is now is going around the perimeter of the field. But he's still just turning the corner and going to the other end. Now in this case he's following the edge of the field and you can see that he's 30 feet off of uh, an adjacent guideline there. But he's following the edge of the field at this point and he's not really following guidance. Now, as you see, he's coming up on a previously applied perimeter back there in the, in the background. And as he approaches his point of beginning, the last pass guidance mode will kick in and will tell me how close or far away he is from his adjacent pass. And he's two feet off and you see the red appear showing that he's overlapping by two feet. Now he's also coming up on where he started collecting a boundary and it should automatically close by itself and tell us how many acres are in the field. There's 78.81 bounded acres in this field so it goes away and he's continuing to ignore his guidance it's telling him to move to the left two feet to minimize this red overlap here. But again, this is for demonstration purposes so you can see what, correct, what corrective action you'd need to do steering the vehicle. You'll watch when he turns this corner, the mapping will show that he's actually skipped this corner. Aha! He's also overlapping a couple of feet. So that record keeping that we're seeing there could be valuable to determine whether the application was done correctly or not. In this case here, he's a foot and a half off and it's showing that he's skipping some area over here on the right side. So again, if he would follow his guidance prompts and steer to the right 1.5 feet, he would eliminate this skip. You can see he's coming up on the end of the field and his last pass guidance mode is saying, well, you need to hang a left here pretty quick. But again, you see he shortchanged his corner and misapplied. He still needs to move to the right 1.5 feet to get online and to avoid any skips. We're coming up on the perimeter of the field. He gets a warning that he needs to turn off his five boom sections. So you would manually cut your sections off. He's making his turn around. And he's going to come back out into the field and you get a warning that you should turn your boom sections back on. And you now have continued last pass guidance.
I'm going to change to AB straight guidance mode. And there's a nudge feature here that I'll show you since this shows from my previously established guideline that he needs to move over to the right 4.1 feet. What if that was due to there being a few days lapse between the beginning of the job and the finishing of the job uh, due to being rained out or whatever? Let's say I wanted to pull into the field and nudge that guideline over to my current vehicle position. I would be able to come over here to my A plus nudge and now you see it's nudged the original guideline to my current vehicle position and I'm now on zero. And he's coming up on the end of the field. He should get a prompt on when to turn his boom sections off. You manually turn your switches off. He's going to make his turn and aim for the next guidance pass. When I'm halfway there, it's already telling me how close I am to the next guideline and you can steer right into it. It gives you a warning to turn your boom sections back on and you begin mapping and accumulating applied area once again.